Hi guys, let me please introduce to my new gadget that I've been working on for a while now. I like to refer to it as a visually impaired assistant. It's a clock, stopwatch, egg timer and some other things things for uh, visually impaired. And now I hear you th saying that uh, these sorts of devices have been on the market for a while now. Well, I can do anything but agree, but the price was the really, really issue. So, yeah, as you can see here, I have some de design issues here. Uh, the buttons aren't really well put there. I should have used this, these buttons instead. Uh, these are uh, buttons from, from a keyboard. This would be probably a much better solution, but this is what I had lying around at the moment. Uh, yeah. So to the functions, it's a clock. Yeah, it it can talk actually. Uh, I'm planning to you know, somehow somehow hook it up to a to an MP3, but uh, at the moment it just beeps out the code telling you the number. So this is a zero, and now it's in a menu. So when I press this exit button, it will beep out the current time. Yeah, well, as you can see, each unit uh, has a different code for it. For example, one is just a single beep, and five is two beeps connected uh, to each other. Uh, it's pretty much like Roman numbers. Like you type, for example, for six, you write, you type uh, VI, and this is just beep, beep, beep. You know, so yeah, this is how it works. And uh, yeah, the second function here, that's a meter, because I usually uh, I actually manage to use this rotor encoder as a measuring device. So when I accept this, now I can just use this to yeah, sorry about it to just measure something like this, and then then we'll just beep up the code and. Yeah, this is a water level recognizer so that you don't uh, put too much water in a cup and spill it. So this is the probe and it's nothing more than just wires. These are actually paper clips, some hot glue. So you just put it to here like this. And my hands are a little bit full now. But basically you just Hook those two connectors together. Sorry, but like this. Just, you just put it inside. And you just, just select the the right program here. It's number two, and yeah, you just activate it. So you can see it works. And the pitch changes how I move this up and down. I'm sorry if you can see it, but there's actually water inside. That's about it. Yeah, and also, I don't know if I mentioned it. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'm not really sure how I'll cut the video. So, basically, those two buttons are connected via the same uh, input pin as uh, the probe. So if I press those two buttons, it will just generate the sound. Yeah. So to exit th this program, I actually have to uh, move the rotary encoder. It's, it might be a good idea to unplug it because there is this water inside and just it thinks I'm trying to press press some button and it just doesn't work that well but after you unplug it it 
works perfectly. Yeah, yeah and this is the uh, fourth function where I can also uh, show you how uh, the uh, beeping system works basically. And uh, yeah, so I just go inside, and it's l it's like an egg timer. So uh, you select after how many minutes it will basically go off. Uh, so after you press it for first time, it will uh, beep out number fifty. Yeah. Uh, for example, if you like to uh, select fifty-five, uh, then it will be one time 50 one time 5 so it will uh, so by beeping out 50 it basically asks you the question how many times can 50 fit into the, into your desired number okay so i press it now and it, it will just beep out 50 yeah that was 50 i want the alarm to go off after say 1 minute yeah so i just press this Yeah. That was five. Was one. And now I'm basically just setting how many times should one be there. One times one. Okay. By the way, the special code you hear here. Yeah, this is zero. So this is a one. So it's one times one. Yeah, it has been accepted, and after one minute, it will go off. So I just pause it. Yeah. So now the alarm is going off, and it will be making a sound for one minute. And if I wish to cancel it. I just just snooze it, I just press this button here. Yeah. Now it's off and I'm back in menu. Yeah, and that's that's pretty much demonstration of our functions. So yeah, the guts of this thing are those two buttons with resistors hooked up to them. This little Lego wheel mounted on top of a rotary encoder. And let's just see, see what's inside. Sorry, I don't have three hands. Yeah. Yeah, there's this clay that holds everything together. This is a piezo speaker. I'm sorry about quality of my camera, but I managed to drop one on the floor. Yeah, those are two AA batteries. Yeah, those are just some pull up re uh, resistors for our rotary encoder. Yeah, these are universal PCB with 8 pin IO on it. It's uh, 80 with Arduino code running on it. Yeah, it's interrupt driven. This li little rotary encoder interrupts the processor. And yeah, that's pretty much it, I, I believe. Yeah, there's this thing that's uh, that I'm proud of. Uh, basically, uh, it uses one analog pin for uh, for input of both of the buttons and uh, also the probe because it just measures the uh, it measures the resistance and so it can tell which one of these butter buttons was pla uh, was pressed and also the resistance of the water and uh, it can generate the tone. So. Yeah, here's just one extra resistor for this uh, those two buttons and the probe, and that's pretty much it. And as you can see, uh, there's still plenty of space here. Um, I'm probably going to add some. Uh, yeah, and I also have a uh, like uh, one one extra pin, three, or maybe even two. I'm not really sure about this one. Yeah. Yeah, maybe on two. So I just use it uh, for some square wave genera generator that I put in here to get much more accurate timing than with internal oscillator. 
because it's not really suitable for clock at the time. I mean the egg timer is pretty goes pretty well, but and also the stopwatch, but um, it's not it doesn't go that well with uh, clock. So yeah, that's about it. Yeah. So thank you. This is probably it. The design isn't finest. And also, so I'm aiming to improve the precision of the clock and lower the battery consumption. Also, at the time, it isn't really that bad. It takes about one milliamp. So I estimate that the battery could last some three months, maybe. Batteries, to be correct. And yeah, so that's about it. So thank you for your patience. See you.